how wonderful. A family newsletter. It's from Great Aunt Abby. Oh, I haven't heard from her in ages. We regret to inform you of the passing of Abigail Spoonbill. Oh, and wish to convene you for the reading of her will. Oh, dear. The reading will take place in Scotland, where I will be informed of my inheritance of Abigail's estate. Oh, Abby. Poor, poor Abby. Oh, I wish we had spent more time together. Auntie, it's Willard. I'm afraid I have some unfortunate news. Great Aunt Abby has passed away, and I seem to have inherited her estate. How strange, Willard. We seem to have both inherited the estate. It appears that we have just stumbled upon another mystery. Pray for the night to be visiting Duck and Bill Castle, Mom. Whoa! Oh! Seems rather fitting, really. You're visiting Abigail Spoonbill, I gather. Lovely lady. Gave her a cab ride just the other day. Left me a handsome tip. Just the other day? Give my regards to Miss Abigail. Regards? And I thought news travelled fast in these small towns. You act as if doom awaits me at the castle, not a simple reading of a will. Auntie, come in. We've been waiting for you. We? Yes. It appears that we aren't the only relatives to have inherited Abigail's estate. Oh, Marjorie! Thank goodness you're finally here. You must tell us what's going on. Josie and Amy Ida, how good to see you again. I'm as puzzled by this as you are. Ah, bellissimo! You must be a Miss Mallard, the world-famous detective, Benny. Auntie, this is Mario Sprigg. He was Aunt Abigail's lawyer. He will be the executor of the will. See, si, see, si. but first we must eat. I have prepared a feast. Prego, this way. one to arrive. Yes, uh, but first cousin twice removed, Effie Goosander from London, has disappeared. She was supposedly the first to arrive, but no one has seen hide nor feather of her. Well, this is a big place. I I'm sure she'll turn up soon. Oh, my, what a lot of stairs. Uh, where exactly is the dining room, Willard? We're almost there. When I was a young duck, I spent several weeks here every summer. I used to love running up and down all the flights of stairs. There must be at least 20 of them in the castle. And do all of them have exactly 13 steps? 13 steps? I never noticed before. That's bad luck. Oh, dear. A power line must have been hit. Here we go. This will help us find our way. Ooh, we must be close. Do you smell that? Garlic. I think we should make a, a, a how you say, a, a, a see, a, a toast to Abigail Spoonbill. Willard, I understand that you were quite close to your great aunt. Would you care to say a few words? Oh, thank goodness. Finally. I was getting the creeps. <clears throat> I did spend a lot of time with great aunt Abby. She was very fond of me. Fond of you? It so happens that I spoke regularly to Auntie Abby, and she never mentioned your name. You may have spoken to her, but my sisters Millie and Tilly and I visited her every weekend. <laughs> That's what you say, Tilly Butterball. If anyone should inherit Abby's estate, it should be my brother Max and I. And why is that? Lineage. We're first cousins. What about Effie? She's also a first cousin. Twice removed doesn't count. Well, Amy and I are second cousins once removed. Jim and Bill and I are third cousins. Oh, yeah, but, well, well, I'm a fourth cousin. You're not. I knew her best. So that I deserve it more than you do. Oh, would you pass the salt, please, Willard? No, oh, no, bad luck. Don't tell me that my nephew, an inspector with the Swiss police, is still superstitious. Better safe than sorry. I even have a good luck charm. 
It's helped me solve many cases. Prego, prego. Everyone, please calm yourselves. Your aunt has left the videotape the wheel. I think the time has come for us to watch it. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you could all make it. Ah, Miller, darling, how are you? Solving many cases with the Swiss police? I was always very fond of you, dear. <laughs> and my dear Marjorie, I do so regret not having spent more time with you. And my dear nieces, Millie, Jilly, and Tilly, how can I ever thank you for visiting me every single weekend? <laughs> I wish she would get to the wheel already. Ah, and dear Sven, uh, probably quacking at me to get on with it. <laughs> so, let's cut to the chase. My will is very simple. You must all stay in the castle for one night. And those of you who do will inherit the castle. And you may do whatever you want with it. So good luck and good night. Oops, silly me. I forgot one tiny little detail of the castle's past. It was once the home of Count Kiskula. A terrible kiss fire. He hunted for victims to kiss when the moon was full. You all know how we ducks hate to be kissed. Our beaks get in the way, and it is absolute torture for us. Did she say kiss? Oh, ghastly! How much is this place worth the gam? Rumor has it that his ghost haunts the castle. But I've never been kissed. Uh, well, not by Kissula, that is. So I don't see why any of you should be worried. Ta-ta for now. She's off her rocker. A complete quack. As if we would believe in some silly keyspire who goes around kissing ducks. Ha! Huh? She's used trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Kiss you, what? Haunted castle! You call that a simple wheel? What is a keyspire, anyway? Well, I'm not spending another minute in this creepy place, let alone an entire night. Come on, Amy, we're out of here. Everyone, please remain calm. You heard Abigail. If she's not worried, then none of us should be either. Auntie, I'm not certain that my rabbit's foot can ward off kiss spires. Well, I must be leaving now. I have a long trip back to Italy. Good luck, everyone. Mr. Sprig, wait. You forgot your umbrella. Oh, grazie. Are we all staying tonight, ghost or no ghost? Good. Then I suggest that we all bed down for the night. Uh, Willard, why don't you assign the rooms? All right, Auntie. Follow me, everyone. There are plenty of bedrooms in the east wing. Auntie, do you know who this is? Uh, why, yes. Uh, that was Abigail's father. He died when Abby was very young. I think it was in 1913. Uh, yes, it was a Friday. Oh, December 13th, I believe. Huh? F -f Friday the 13th? 1913? Double bad luck? Bad luck had nothing to do with it. He passed on very peacefully in his sleep. Uh, speaking of which... Oh, I am terribly tired. Well, here are the bedrooms. Sven and Max, you can have this room... Jilly, Millie, and Tilly, you can all share this one. Jim, Bill, and Bob will take that one. And, Auntie, if Effie turns up, you two can share the corner room. I'll be in the room next to Auntie's room if any of you need me. <laughs> oh, what? Is that you, Willard? Old beds are quite high. Oh, silly me. <laughs> I don't know why I bother with this sleep mask. The wind must have blown them open. Oh, thankfully, the storm has passed. Hmm. Willard? Willard? Willard, wake up! Willard, are you awake? What just broke? I saw something in the shadows and knocked the mirror over, which gives me seven years of bad luck. Oh, don't be silly. 
the power is out, Willard. But thankfully, the storm has stopped, and there's a beautiful full moon. <gasps> full moon? I isn't that when the kiss fire is supposed to strike? <laughs> hey! Don't leave me alone! <laughs> it's coming from the Butterball sister's room. It's locked. What is it? It's my sisters. They've been duck-napped. Duck-napped? Are you sure? I was sleeping when I felt this awful cold, wet beak on my cheek. I awoke and I saw the kiss pie running out of the room through the balcony window. I screamed. Then I noticed that my sisters were gone. Are you saying that you saw the ghost of Count Kiskula? He wasn't a ghost. He was real. I felt him kiss me. It was awful. Did you see his face? No. The room was dark and his face was covered by a high collar. He was wearing a long black cape. I want my sister's back. <laughs> now do calm down. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for this. Maybe they went downstairs for a midnight snack. The door was locked, remember? We'd better check on the Scott brothers. Sven? Max? Are you in there? <sighs> Maybe they went downstairs for a midnight snack. No, I think they ducknapped my sisters. Why would they do such a thing? I overheard them talking earlier. Their business went bankrupt recently. And Max said that this castle would be a perfect way to get them out of debt. They're trying to scare us all away. Well then, all the more reason to stay. Jim, uh, why don't you stay with Jilly? Uh, Bill, you can stay in here just in case Max and Sven show up. Uh, and we'll head back to our rooms. I suggest that you lock all doors and windows. Is that too tight, Jim? Nope, that's fine. Now, there's no way anyone can duck net me as long as I'm tied to this armoire. You get some sleep, Jilly. I'll keep an eye on the window. Good night, Jim. Jim? The coast is clear. Hmm. Much better. Disguise. Now, to find a strategic spot to await the kiss fire. Perfect spot. Now, if I can only come up with a plan of attack. Hey! Oh, what was that? Sounds like it's coming from behind the walls. That better be the sound of some very big mice. It's me, Willard. Oh, Willard. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were Kiskula. I seem to have stumbled upon a secret passage. Well done, Willard. Let's see where it leads us. You're welcome. I think. I had no idea there were secret passageways. Abigail probably didn't tell you about the passageways, nor about Kiskula, so you wouldn't be scared. Ow! Ugh. This is not my lucky day. I think you've just found what looks to be the main power switch. Good job, Willard. Aha! The lights going out had nothing to do with the storm at all. Someone turned off the power supply. There's a logical explanation for everything. Mm -hmm. Willard, I found a door. How many relatives did you say we were, Willard? Thirteen. Why? Was it still raining when Josie and Amy left? I think so. Very interesting. Come on, Willard. I need only a few more clues. What is it, Auntie? Have you found another clue? Not exactly. Kiss, kiss, kiss. 
Yes. Now, calm down, Richard. Remember who you are. This book outlines our family history. How wonderful. A page has been ripped out. Why would someone do that? It's my guess that they didn't want their name to appear. What's wrong, Auntie? This book has a peculiar smell. I'm sure it's a very old book. It's probably mold or mildew. No. Garlic. I've had enough of this, Auntie. Oh, relatives disappearing, a kiss fire on the prowl, torn pages from a family history, cousins I know, and those I've never met before. Willard, that's it. Thanks to what you just said, we are about to catch the culprit. Which part of what I just said? Stay here and open all the windows and doors to the room. I'll be right back. But, Auntie, how do you plan on catching a kiss spire by roasting garlic? Everyone knows that garlic keeps kiss spires away. Not this one. He loves garlic. Keep fanning, Willard. <laughs> well done, Willard. Kiskula. No, not Kiskula. As I suspected. Mario Sprigg, disguised as Kiskula. Take him down to the foyer, Willard, while I gather the others. Then I'll explain everything. You've all met Mario Sprigg, a.k.a. Count Kiskula. But I thought he left to go back to Italy. That's exactly what he wanted us to believe. But when one of the secret passageways led me back here into the foyer... I counted 14 umbrellas. Uh, since there are 13 of us, it struck me as slightly odd. But then I realized that the 14th umbrella belonged to Mario Sprigg and that he had only pretended to leave. He returned later and foolishly replaced it on the rack. And then there was the garlic smell on the book Willard and I found. But we all ate Mario's supper, and that was full of garlic. Yes, but it was the actual pages of the book that smelled of garlic. And only the chef's hands, after having sliced the garlic, would smell strong enough to rub off on the pages. But why would Abby's lawyer want to scare us all away? Good question, Jilly. And one I couldn't have figured out without Willard's help. It made sense right after Willard mentioned relatives that he didn't know. Then I remembered the missing page from the family history book. It was torn from the book by someone that didn't want to be recognized. And that had to be Mario, because only he did not claim to be a relative. Mario Sprigg is a relative of ours? And no one knew him? Well, Effie had met him. And, of course, Abigail knows him very well. And she still does. Don't you, Abby? Hello, everyone. Abigail! Abigail. Oh, you were right, Marjorie. I know Mario Sprig, and thanks to our own family detective, I've solved my own little mystery. Solving mysteries must run in the family. I've had my doubts about Mario Sprig for a while now. You see, I've been using him as my lawyer and financial advisor, and over the years, small amounts of money have been disappearing. So why continue to use him as your lawyer? Well, I had no proof. I mean, Mario is family, after all, and you don't fire family without proof. At the time, had come to draw up my will, but I wasn't sure if I could trust Mario with the handling of my estate papers. So you put him through a trial run and faked your own death. Brilliant. Well, not brilliant enough, obviously. How did you know I was still alive? The cab driver and townsfolk didn't know of your passing, and not one relative mentioned a funeral. Not only that, but you looked in fine shape in your video testament. Why, thank you. But I had no idea Mario would pull this elaborate stunt to try and keep the estate all to himself. Luckily, I found the others. Confess, Mario. All right, you win. I didn't know that Abigail was on to me. When I got the news of her death, I knew I had to have this place. And if it weren't for that meddling detective, it would have been mine. All mine. Goodbye. Do keep in touch. Thank you so much. This was better than a murder mystery game. I do hope that no one is angry with me for my little stunt. I think we're all glad to see you alive and well. 
And I'm sure this will help them get over it. It's very generous of you, Abby. Thank you. Well, they all deserve a little something. I believe in sharing my wealth. And I believe in making your own luck. Auntie has shown me that superstitions are silly. What will you do with your castle, Abby? I've decided to donate it to charity and have asked for it to be made into a retirement home for aging ducks. You'll all get your rooms, of course, when you reach that point in time. Not that I'll be needing mine anytime soon, but thanks a million. Uh, I mean a lot. Had a lovely stay at Duckenville, did ya? Yes, but I completely forgot to give Abigail your regards. Quite all right, ma'am. To the train station. Yes, please. Whoa! 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 What's this? Just my luck, Auntie. Look at this. Kiskula lives. Driver, who was your last fare? You must have known him. He came from the castle before dawn. Rather strange bloke, to say the least. He was wearing a black cape with a high collar. Said something about having nowhere to stay anymore. I drove him to the train station. Just our luck to have stumbled upon another mystery, Willard. Looks like I may be needing this after all. Thank you. 